So guys, this is going to be part two of the medical kit series. Once again, I'm not sure how many parts are going to be in this series, but today we're going to be looking at my eye back and what I carry for bushcrafting, hunting, and hiking for true medical emergencies. Now in the first part of this series, we went over um, the just very basic things that will cover about 90% of your injuries. You know, just gauze and water are very important and in this series or this part, those are already given parts to the kit. So we're going to be going over uh, the more or the more prepared kit, and this is going to be dealing with larger and more important injuries. And so let's move over there and take a look at what's in this kit. So guys, like I said, now let's take a closer look at what's in this eye pack. Now keep in mind, the two things, water and gauze or some type of bandage material is already a given. So this is when things go truly wrong. Now I do want to know why I have an eye pack on you or on your kit. And the primary reason I always have an eye pack, especially when bushcrafting and hunting, is that I'm carrying a lot of tools that can hurt me. Obviously, I have a gun, I have a saw, I have an axe, sometimes an axe, saw, but a gun, field. multiple knives, and all these things, while I haven't necessarily hurt myself with them severely so far, they do have the opportunity that I could possibly hurt myself in the future with them or what I'm most worried about is not myself but other people that come out with me and once again while I would hope none of them hurt themselves severely I don't want to take any chances and I would rather have them alive as opposed to dead so that is essentially what this kit is for and so in here you're going to be seeing a lot of things to be dealt with trauma and severe wounds so the first thing in here is some, this is quick clot combat gauze here. And so that's just what this is. I have two things of combat gauze. I just have one kind of free floating in the top of this eye fat. And then I have one actually in the kit. So of course this has a pull out to it. it. Just all kind of pulls out, it is attached. So if you did want to like run this on some kind of load bearing equipment, it could stay attached and all together as a unit. But obviously in the way I use it, it doesn't necessarily work quite like that. So on the outside of this little kit here, I have a cat tourniquet. And this is for, of course, stopping any serious bleeding. Once again, these are not really to be used at pretty much any time, except for when you have arteries that have been cut and are severely bleeding. And once again, that could definitely happen with an ax. And so I have a cat tourniquet there. So now getting into the core of this little pouch. So as mentioned, I have another thing of combat gauze in this uh, pouch. So this stuff's a little bit slippery. And then here I have some tape. I forget the technical term for this, but this is a special type of medical tape. Uh, it is a special type of tape. I can't remember its name, but it's this special tape. Man, I'm trying to remember its name, but it's a special tape and uh, that's used for holding on gauze. Of course, I have the combat gauze, two things of combat gauze. I also have some compression gauze. In addition to the compression gauze, I also have an Israeli bandage in the middle here. And then, of course, I have gloves here, or not necessarily gloves. Yeah, I think they're gloves, but latex, or maybe these are nitrile. I think these might be nitrile gloves here on this side for, of course, dealing with someone else's wounds. And then here on this side, this is a really special tool. This is actually a hyphen, but they make two different types. There's the hyphen and the halo, and those are chest seals. And those are really, they're really specific, but they are very important to have, especially if you're running and working with guns. Essentially what the chest seals, whether they're hyphens or whether they're, uh, this is a hyphen in particular, but whether they're halos or hyphens, what they're designed to do is if you get shot in the lungs or if a bullet passes through your lungs, either one of them, I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys, you hunters out there, but that is a death shot. If you don't get some kind of medical attention, especially with a chest seal like this, you're pretty much dead. So that is exactly what the hyphen chest seal is for. And of course, I'm not gonna take it out of here, but it has the hyphen seal and the needle is in the middle here. That's why I don't wanna like take it out because it 
there's multiple parts to it, but that is a hyphen chest seal for any bullet wounds into the lungs or Essentially chest is a Roush or Roush nasal tube, and I forget exactly how to use them. I really need to go relook. It's been a little while since I learned how to use one of these, but you essentially use this with lubricant and it goes into the nose and I'm trying to remember what it does. I don't exactly remember what it does, but these are pretty dangerous to use and I would not necessarily recommend using them. They're very last, like very last option because you can do a lot of damage to a person if you don't know how to properly apply a Roush. So a Roush, whatever it's called, nasal. Uh, I just don't remember what it's called, but anyways, so that is what that is. And so this is a pretty basic or pretty generalized rather uh, military IFAC. Most IFACs don't have two sets of combat gauze, but I would highly encourage combat gauze because this stuff is really great. And this is probably the first stuff that you're going to probably use in all reality because most of these things like Israeli bandages, hyphen, chest seals are primarily for bullet wounds. And once again, it could happen, though I, it's probably not that likely to happen especially if you know you're working with people who actually know what they're doing with guns, you're probably not going to have to use, especially the hyphen. But once again, the reason why I carry things like the hyphen and the cat tourniquet is those two in particular are primarily used when if they're, if they're like the last option tools. And if you don't use them, the person's likely going to die. And so that's why I carry those in here. And they're a little bit more specific. They're certainly expensive too. But once again, I carry them as that last option tool. And if you, in these particular scenarios, when you'd be using them, they are a life saving thing. And if you don't have them and you don't use them, then the person will likely die. So that's those. Anyways, like I was going to say, I carry two things of combat gauze though, because that's primarily the most likely thing out of all of this you're going to be using. Because say you plant an ax accidentally in your like shin, let's just say that, you know, that's going to have a lot of bleeding, but you may not, or you probably won't strike an artery, though you may hit your leg and like I said, cause severe bleeding. And even though you don't hit an artery, still, if you bleed enough, you can at least go into shock maybe not die but you can definitely go into shock so it's important to have something like quick clot quick clot combat gauze where this stuff is designed to really stop bleeding and of course i love quick clot uh, as far as whether it's the sport or the combat i do prefer combat a little bit more but uh, it's really it good because it has in it, or Celex, however you want to pronounce that. But it's a special type of chemical that uh, really bonds with blood and essentially forms a crystallized version of blood. And so it really, really stops blood very fast. Once again, though, quick clot is another thing that should not be just used if, like, say you just cut yourself a little bit with a knife you know, just like on your finger, just a little bit. You probably should not use a quick clot. I do want to note some other things that you can use. There are things just like straight, and I've looked at a few other uh, IFACs. One thing I will note is there are IFACs that come out, or that come with just straight Celox, which is a type of powder. Once again, that when mixed with blood, it forms crystals. And that stuff is really awesome. In fact, that was what quick clot kind of got inspired by. But do keep in mind, if you do use just straight Celox uh, in its form, if you just use straight Celox in that type of form, you will have to have it surgically removed because those crystals don't just like pull off the body. They actually have to be gone in and cut out. So once again, if it means you not dying from the trauma, then definitely use the Celox, but just keep in mind that if you use it, it will have to be surgically removed. So that's a little bit of a downside in my opinion to uh, just straight Celox, whereas I believe for the most part quick clot, because the Celox is actually in the bandage itself or in the gauze, it's it will still seal like to you, but it won't be like needing to be surgically removed because you're not just dumping the powder straight into the wound. You're using a bandage that has it put into it. So that's why I like um, quick clot in particular. And that's why I have a couple things of it. So anyways, guys, 
Now it's been a little bit of a comprehensive uh, look at this one. And certainly if you were to go price out these components, even this IFAC, this is around a $200 IFAC. It's certainly not cheap, but why I think you should carry one is still just for the fact that, like I said, a lot of the tools in here are things that I've not used, like actually in the field yet, and thank the Lord for that. But these are things that if you had to use them, these are life and death things. If you don't use quick cloth, you can go into shock due to trauma that you would likely be using the combat gauze for. Or like I said, with a tourniquet, if you get an artery or an articular cut, you're going to need to use something to stop that artery from bleeding out and killing you once again going into shock and eventually dying so a lot of these things are very last or worst case scenario but things that you should definitely be prepared for once again i wouldn't necessarily say you would need this all of this stuff if you were just going on a friendly little hike down a trail i don't think you'd necessarily need any of this stuff or any of the ifax level stuff but if you're going to be operating, if you know you're going to be operating with guns, knives, axes, saws, like bushcrafters do, you should really consider uh, carrying an IFAC, if nothing else, for, and the primary reason I carry mine is, like I said, if anyone else I, I'm with has an accident with an axe or with a saw or whatever, I have the, this kit for them. Once again, I know myself pretty well and I'm pretty well trained when it comes to axes and guns and knives, so I'm not likely going to hurt myself severely with them, but even, even the best of people can make mistakes and suffer the consequences. So still, probably carry it for yourself as well. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that look at what I personally carry on my backpack for first aid, whether it be in just a very minimal setup and, you know, covering 90% of wounds or for that very small percentage where things get real, things get serious, and you have to start using big time bandages, possibly things like the cat tourniquet. Uh, so... Once again, this isn't necessarily meant to be a shock factor video. I'm not trying to scare people by saying, well, you could die. But these are just the realities of what can happen. And hopefully you guys will be inspired to at least go check out an IFAC. Once again, you each and every person has to go with their own mindset and know what you're doing. Once again, running a hyphen chest seal, if you don't go out into the woods with guns, well, then you probably won't need a hyphen chest seal because there's a very low likelihood of you getting shot. But if you do know you operate with guns, maybe it is a good idea to have a hyphen chest seal. Overall though, if nothing else, make sure you do have an IFAC because unlike uh, people like, unlike people like Dave Canterbury, and once again, no, no fault against his bushcrafting skills. He's a very skilled bushcrafter, but I, I do not agree with him as far as medical kit goes because, like I said, these things can become very real and they can become very dangerous. So anyways, guys, that's it for now. As always, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you're not already for more of this awesome Alaskan content. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. I'm out.